figure 3.19 shows the different stages while we are sleeping. Each cycle of sleep lasts around 90 minutes and alternates between rapid eye movement sleep and not non-rapid eye movement sleep throughout the course of a normal night's sleep. In most cases, the more restorative period of non-rapid eye sleep happens early in the night, whereas more rapid eye movement sleep in red occurs towards the conclusion of the sleep cycle. Wikimedia. We can uh, see everything about this at the link below. As can be also seen in figure 3.20, and EEG's recording of brain waves while a person is sleeping reveals that the activity level of the brain changes between the various stages of sleep. When we are awake, the activity in our brain is characterized by the existence of beta waves that travel extremely uh, with a high speed. The waves, which are referred to as an alpha waves, get longer when we initially start to drift off to sleep. As we go into stage 1 sleep, which is defined by the sensation of tiredness, the brain starts to create theta waves, which are even slower than alpha waves. When a person is in, in a stage 1 of sleep, they lose part of their muscular tone and the majority of their awareness of their surroundings. During the early period of sleep, some persons may suffer unexpected jerks or twitches, and even vivid hallucinations. Approximately 5% of the night is spent in the first stage of sleep. In a normal situation, if we are permitted to continue sleeping, we will eventually go from stage 1 sleep to a stage 2 sleep. When a person is in the second stage of sleep, their muscle activity decreases even more, and they lose consciousness knowledge of their surroundings. This stage is normally accounted for around half of an average adult's entire sleep during on a given night. During stage 2 sleep, theta waves are present and they are interspreaded by bursts of fast brain activity known as the sleep spindles. Stage 2 sleep is also known as a deep sleep. The third stage is a transnational period between the second and fourth phases. Stage 4, also known as a slow wave sleep, is the deepest level of sleep and it is characterized by an increasing percentage of extremely slow delta waves. Stage 4 is also the most common name for this level of sleep. The majority of sleep disorders such as sleepwalking, sleep talking, sleep terrors and bed wetting manifest themselves during the period of this, of this uh, sleep cycle. Recordings of the brain patterns taken using EEG while the subject was asleep Figure 3.20 Each stage of sleep is characterized by a distinctive pattern of activity in the brain. Non-rapid eye movement stage 3 and 4 display delta waves. Um, a portion of the skeletal muscle tone is preserved, which enables afflicted patients to be able to rise from their beds and participate in actions that are often rather complicated despite the fact that awareness is not present. However, even when we are in the deepest stages of sleep, we are still aware of what is going on in the outside world. Even if we are sound sleep, we are likely to respond if smoke enters the room or if we hear the wail of a newborn. This is especially true if the infant is crying. These incidents once again highlight how much of our information processing occurs outside of our conscious awareness. After entering what is known as a very deep sleep at first, the brain eventually starts to become more active again, and we typically enter the first stage of rapid eye movement. Sleep around 90 minutes after falling asleep. And the rapid eye movements that are characterized of the REM stage of sleep, as well as the increased heart rate and the facial twitches that accompany it, are where the stages get its name. People who are disturbed while they are in the REM stage of sleep nearly invariably say that they, they were in the midst of a dream, in contrast to individuals who are woken at other phases of sleep, who report having dreams considerably less often. 
Emotional processing happens during REM sleep as well. During rapid eye movement sleep, there is an increased activity in the limbic system, including the amygdala. At the same time, the genitals get stimulated, even if the subject matter of the dream we are experiencing is not sexual. A guy who is 25 years old may have an erection for almost half of the night, and the traditional morning erection is remnant from the last stage of REM sleep before waking up. In a normal night, we will go through multiple cycles of REM sleep followed by periods of non-REM sleep. The length of the rapid eye movement portion of the cycle has a tendency to extend over the course of the night, going from approximately 5 to 10 minutes early in the night to 20, 25 to 20 minutes shortly before awaking in the morning. These extensions typically occur because rapid eye movement sleep is more restorative than other types of sleep. Positive Psychology Kate Hefferon Eliona Bonneville Theory, Research and Applications Chapter 1 Introduction to Positive Psychology Learning Objectives Positive psychology is the study of topics as diverse as happiness, optimism subjective, well-being, and personal growth. The opening chapter has two goals. 1. To describe and critically examine the emergence and development of this new field in recent years. 2. To orientate students to some of the topics studied by positive psychologists. At the end of the chapter, you will have the opportunity to complete questionnaires on some of the main topics in positive psychology. List of topics The scope and aim of positive psychology the history of positive psychology, how we measure happiness, the good life and authenticity, humanistic psychology, where positive psychology stands today. Mark essay questions. 1. Critically discuss the differences between positive psychology and psychology as usual. 2. Is positive psychology as different from humanistic psychology as it claims to be? 3. Why might we need positive psychology? What is positive psychology? In today's world, society is facing extremely though challenged in the form of global warming, natural disasters, economic recession, unprecedented homelessness, terrorism, and the draining continuation of war. With all these sadness and horror, where in the world does a science based on testing happiness, well-being, personal growth and the good life fits into the modern day agenda. This textbook will take you through the new science of positive psychology, which aims to understand, test, discover and promote the factors that allow the individuals and communities to thrive. Positive psychology focuses on well-being, happiness, flow, personal strength, wisdom, creativity, imagination, and characteristics of positive group and institutions. Furthermore, the focus is not just how to make individuals happy, thereby perpetuating a self-centered narcissistic approach 
but on happiness and flourishing at a global level as well. We will look at how individuals and groups thrive and how increasing the well-being of one will have a positive effect on the other, leading to a win-win situation. What we hope to demonstrate throughout this textbook is that positive psychology is not simply the focus on positive thinking and positive emotions. It's much more than that. Indeed, the area of positive psychology is focused on what makes individuals and communities flourish rather than languish. Flourishing is defined as a state of positive mental health to thrive, to prosper, and to fare well in endeavors free of mental illness, filled with emotional vitality and function positively in private and social realms. Indeed, existing figures show that only 18% of adults meet the criteria of flourishing. 65% are moderately mentally healthy and 17% are languishing. Unsurprisingly, flourishing has several positive correlates such as academic achievement, mastery goal setting, higher level of self-control and continued perseverance. Thus, a science that focuses on development and facilitation of flourishing environment and individuals is in an important addition to the psychological science. Think about it. Have you decided to take this model? What was it about the syllables that attracted you? Why have you decided to take this model? What was it about the syllables that attracted you? Past experiences? A certain topic? Take a moment to reflect on this. Positive psychology concentrates on positive experiences at three time points. 1. The past, centering on well-being, contentment and satisfaction. 2. The present, which focuses on concepts such as happiness and flow experiences. 3. The future with concepts, including optimism and hope. Not only does positive psychology distinguish between well-being across time points, but it also separates the subject area into three nodes. The subjective node, which encompasses things like positive experiences and states across past, present and future, for example, happiness, optimism, well-being. The individual note, which focuses on characteristics of the good person, for example, talent, wisdom, law, courage, creativity. The group note, which studies positive institutions, citizenship and communities, for example, altruism, tolerance, work ethic. Positive Psychology Center, 1998. Contrary to criticism, positive psychology is not a selfish psychology. At its best, 
positive psychology has been able to give the scientific community, society and individuals a new perspective on existing ideas as well as providing empirical evidence to support the phenomenon of human flourishing. Above all, though positive psychology has challenged and rebalanced and deficit approach to living while connecting its findings to many different disciplines. Throughout this text you will see how inducing positive emotions, committing acts of kindness and enhancing social connection enable individual and social flourishing demonstrating the usefulness of the discipline for individual, group and community well-being. Authentic happiness and good life. What is the good life? Socrates, Aristotle, Plato believe that one people pursued a virtuous life. They will become authentically happy. Epicurus and later utilitarians prayed that happiness was indeed the abundance of positive feeling and pleasures. Positive psychology has traditionally conceptualized authentic happiness as a mix of hedonic and eudaimonic well-being. Hedonic happiness encompasses high levels of positive effect.